for serving, continuously serving on a school board. He served on the Redland School Board for 52 years consecutively. Nobody else has done that in the state of Texas. Mm. So mm. I thought that pretty neat. Uh, then, anyway, after he, he uh, deeded his property to his uh, people, well, he moved into Tyler, and uh, he and he uh, and he and one other man built a uh, cotton. Uh, well, let's see, what did they call it? It was a anyway, they spun cotton into into uh, fabrics, and um, he it was very successful, but only operated about eight months because one afternoon it caught on fire and burned to the ground, and it didn't break him financially, but mentally and physically it tore the man up. And he passed away about six months later, and that was in 1868. And at that point, his wife and family moved back here to the plantation, lived here till her death in 1881. She left it to her kiddos, and then they sold it out of the family in 1890 uh, to some people named Beam, and they owned it till 1906. And in 1906, there was a man from Missouri, a guy named Gates, and we don't know a whole lot about Mr. Gates. He, uh, he represented a lot of moneyed people, and they just indiscriminately bought up land everywhere and they happened to buy this 200 acres. And they owned it until 1952. And in 1952, there was a little Tyler lady, she and her husband, they were coming back from Dallas and he said, why don't we take that new road from Canton to Tyler, which is Highway 64. You know, we think of roads that have been here forever, but they hadn't. This one put in until 1952. So anyway, they decided to take the road. They're driving along, they get to, get by this house and Mrs. Windsor looks up and sees it and she said, I've got to have it, that's my project. Well, the reason she needed a project, that year and a number of years, she was the national director of garden clubbing. And that year, the national theme was restoration. Well, everybody else bought them a table or a chair to restore. And this is what she bought, your dream home. Isn't that a beauty? That, oh, was, wow. this, that was this house in 1952. It had, uh, it was 98 years old at that time, and uh, the chimneys had fallen off, but all the brick was still here, so she had them re-clean it and reuse it because all the brick in this house was made here on the plantation. And one of the columns had fallen off, and it was just laying in the front yard deteriorating, and uh, they she shipped it to Atlanta, Georgia to have it rebuilt. And everything else, so they pretty much got locally. And, uh, but she, she restored it the way it had been in 1854. So there's no electricity or plumbing or kitchens, baths, any of that good stuff. Well, when we moved down here 21 years ago, uh, we lived in a house across the road over there. And, but my wife decided, well, she really wanted to live in this house. And I said, well, we can sure do that. I see a couple of problems. One, there's no electricity and there's no plumbing. And uh, for what, I think it's a woman thing, but whatever it was, she decided, she wanted a few of those amenities that she was going to move in. <laughs> so anyway, what I did, I didn't want to disturb any of the rooms the way they were. And so I added seven feet to the back of the house and went up two stories with it. And downstairs, I created me a little office, a, a elevator, powder room, and utility room. And then upstairs, two bathrooms and a seating area. And I'll point those out as we go, but... I hope you couldn't tell it if I didn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any questions at this point? Okay. Okay. And I have it for somebody I read out. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, come on in. This is our parlor. It was also their parlor. Okay, well, All Terry, of our furniture you from... in the house is American. Um, most of the glassware is American, some of it European, but and all of our all of our mirrors are French. So that'll give you an idea as, as we're going through. Okay. Come on in. Make sure you keep it alive and stay keep it in fish. Ma'am, I'd like to talk to you about this when we finish. All right. Well, this is okay, like I say, this is our parlor, it's also theirs. And back then, the only uh, heat in the house would be from your fireplaces. And the women always wanted to get close, but back then they couldn't get very close because their makeup was all made of wax and their faces would melt. Mm. <laughs> so they'd use this little fellow right here. This is called the ladies' fire screen. And this screen adjusts up and down this rod, and they'd put it between their face and the fire so they could get close. <laughs> 
And this is a pern, which is French for flower basket. They all had some place to put flowers and some place to put like sweets or shortbreads or something like that. And mm -hmm. you'll see them in every room. They're all different. There's a little blue one over there, but they all, all look different. And of course, we're, we're decorated up for Christmas now. And this, of course, this little tree isn't always out. And I have two of these. One's in the back hall. You'll see it in a little bit. But uh, these are called feather trees. They were made in Germany between eight, 1840 and 1850s. And uh, what they did, they would take goose feathers and split the spine and dye them green and twist them onto a wire. So all your limbs are made out of goose feathers. Oh, really? Oh, wow. That's amazing. And, and the one in back, yeah, the one in back uh, has uh, mm -hmm. some of the, the uh, limbs are starting to turn white. I guess they didn't have as good a dye. <laughs> mm. So I don't know. But I, I think those are really neat. They're hard to find and nearly impossible. It's pretty new. It's some good stuff. And these are Victorian rose bowls, and nearly everything that the Victorians had were not only beautiful, but they were functional. And this was no exception. And what you do, you cut the rose stem, and you lay the stem in with the rose out, and put one in each of these creases, and it makes a round circle. Then you put another layer and another layer, and all of a sudden, you have a ball on top like below. Mm -hmm. But by doing that, it holds the outside petal or charged petal of the rose together, and it would stay in here for like two weeks instead of two days. So, and my wife believes if one's good, a fleet's better. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have a whole bunch, huh? Yeah, we've collected this period of antique for 55 years now. Man. And um, we've gone every place collecting. And it's uh, it's really funny though, but Carolyn, Carolyn says now her furniture is happy because it has some place it should be. I tell her. It doesn't know if it's happy or sad. It's sitting there, but she's convinced it's happy. So, <laughs> see her tell her your, 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 your furniture really looks happy today. I love the color of the walls in here. Now, the color, I'll tell you about that. The colors that are in all these rooms are all uh, of the period. Right. Okay, now, there may not have been in any one particular room except this yellow in the, in the entry hall. I'm positive that was the right color because when I was redoing a lot of it, I had to pull the baseboard off and they painted that one all the way to the floor before mm. they trimmed it. So I know that was the right color. Mm. Hey, any other questions in here? Because I'll be glad to try them. No, you're doing a great job. Yeah. Thank you. Great job. Okay, well, I hate to tell you now. <laughs> Carol probably didn't tell you, but we have tests as we go through. <laughs> and this is the first one. Y'all know what these are. Uh, like uh, candles. Uh, what? Candles, some like uh, light, uh, light uh, candle light. No. They got a cork hanging on them, yeah. so it's in tongs. Yeah. These are, to do with food. These are Victorian pickle casters. Y'all gonna serve your pickles in there? <laughs> no, you undo the jars. Yeah. You have to put the fork. They had silver things for everything. These just happened to be for pickles. Man. Occasionally, oh, I'll have somebody that'll come through and they'll know what they are. And I say, okay, you're right, but I got another question for you. What's the deal with these pieces of paper in some of them? Oh. They don't have a clue. And, uh, and I tell them, those are different granddaughters that have claimed this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this next room that we're going oh, in was stupid. a bedroom, the way the house was built originally. Today, though, it's our game room, our patriotic room, and our library. So come on in. Yeah. And I finished our game room. We're not political. Oh, man, we don't. Yeah. We don't. Uh, you either win or you don't get a trophy. Everybody doesn't get trophies. I'm so sick of that mess. Man. And I'll point out a couple of things in here. These pictures are kind of neat. There was a yeah. monthly publication that came out between 1885 and 1915 called The Judge. And it was political, but it wasn't Republican or Democrat or Whig or whatever. It was just political. And it had a centerfold. This is two of the centerfolds. I love this top one. This is 1908, poor Republican elephant. He's crying. He's all shackled down by the national debt of sixty million dollars. <laughs> that poor sucker'd be under the ground today. Yeah, joking. Yeah, joking. 
Okay, got a little test for you here. That looks like a pipe. Like a, some kind of musical instrument. Oh, water? I don't know. <laughs> something you blow through. Yeah, looks like. What okay, is it? I'm going to give you a hint. Oh, oh. A hearing. Yeah. Oh. Put, really? it up, put it up to your ear. Man, that thing is. Ooh, I'm gonna, and then, oh, you can and then when you it. talk, it just expands it's the really sound. Done. You know how a shell expands the sound? Right. That's yeah. kind of like what this does. Test, 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 <laughs> test. Oh, okay. <laughs> test, test, okay, test, test. Okay, can you test. hear me? Poke, poke it this way and you can hear it better. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that's amazing. It vibrates down through there. Now, but, now these were just for uh, women. Oh, okay. Because men don't need them. We have selective hearing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so another little... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh go ahead. He was filming that. I was just curious about that's, that. Month. That's my great-granddad. And that's in the Civil War year. Oh. And that's my great-grandmother. Great that's my grandmother. And this is some of his Confederate money. Really? Oh, man. And not those on the bottom. Those on the bottom, we were in Las Vegas about 25 years ago with our son and his wife and another couple. Mm -hmm. And my wife doesn't gamble or anything. And But we went in this one casino, and it had this big slot machine up front. It must have been nearly as tall as this wall here. And uh, it didn't pay money. It paid these commemorative coins oh. that of, of the casino. Well, she thought that was neat. So we had to go to 17 casinos <laughs> and get her coins. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was kind of fun deal. That is awesome. That is awesome. Man, that's a lot of history. Woo. Oh, I got lots of history in here. Man. And, uh, and, yeah. and here's another little, this is kind of a test for you. Okay. This is a 45 star flag. That's between Oklahoma and Utah joining the Union around 1895. Today we have 50 stars in their flag, uh -huh. but there's one flag between 45 and 50 that's extremely hard to find. Do you know which one it is? You got me on that one. 49. And that was between Hawaii uh -huh. Uh -huh. and Alaska joining the Union. And the only reason I'm telling you that is because if you go to a garage sale or you go to the first Monday or you go to whatever and you see one of them, buy it. I promise you it's a deal. They're going to smooth out of sight and price. And it's real easy to tell, and people don't know it, but the star configuration is seven by seven. Ah, mm. uh, okay. That's how you can tell. Yeah. If you see one, pick it up. Pick it up, huh? Yes, sir. And that's a 45 there, huh? That's uh -huh. 45. Uh-huh. And Carolyn just scrunched it in there. Yeah. Thing. Man. That is cool. That is. Now this was the back wall of the old house. Remember I told you I added okay. seven feet to the uh -huh. back. Uh -huh. And this little room in here is my little office and little is the okay. opening word. But I want y'all to come in because I want you to see but, whatever you want to see. But there's two things I'm going to point out to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ladies first. <laughs> ah, man, this is beautiful. See, this is all I need. Yeah. Man. Now, the two things I'm going to point out. The first one is this picture of George Washington here. Ah. When I grew up, every schoolroom in America had that picture. Yep. And today I'm afraid they don't even know who he is. Pretty, mm -hmm. pretty sick. And the other thing I want to point out is this picture over the doorway here. That's the opening day of our state capitol in 1883. Ah. And I can't imagine the feeling those people would have driving up to that monstrous building out in the middle of nowhere Man. in their horse and buggy. And looking at that thing, that just well, you got some history in here that just kind of blows my mind. And so, who are these people? That's two sets of my great great grandparents. Man. The bottom one, they're the parents of the guy out here that, that you were looking at across. Over okay, here. okay, man, this it's real awesome. funny. Different people collect different things or keep different things. My this. family kept everything, kept everything. <laughs> Carolyn's family, well, they chunked it all, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah. that's just, yeah. Yeah. That's just what yeah. people did. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. In that's fact, it. when we first started collecting antiques, first parents said, what are you doing that for? That's the stuff we got rid of. <laughs> In 10 years, when we started, they were starting to love it. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Well, I hope you keep filming, man. Yeah. I see, Eric, this is what you need. If you 
I like that. I like that. <laughs> and uh, this house, this is this is a good piece of history. Uh -huh. uh, Mrs. Windsor received a historical marker for this house after she did her restoration, and it's on the front porch out here. Oh, the one that the yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But there was a certificate that came with it. John Conley signed it. He was oh, our governor back then. He was the one that was with Kennedy, right? But, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is what's neat. Is the first so awarded in Texas. So we had the first historical marker issued in the state of Texas. In the whole entire state? Yeah. This house? Yeah. Man. That's the first colored newspaper. Came out. 1899. Was, was a lot of this uh, memorabilia stuff you collected or stuff that was... No, none of it was here. We collected all of it. You collected all of it? Yeah. Man. Yeah, Man. we've been doing that for... Like I say, 55 years we know everything. Man. Now here's that other little feather tray. You can oh, see yeah. some of the little starting, starting to turn back quiet. And... It doesn't even feel like it. I mean, it feels like those little uh, synthetic trees now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But these are goose, goose feathers. feathers. Wow. Man. These two prints are kind of neat. They were actually made around 1863, right in the middle of the Civil War, to raise money for the South. And this is George Washington and all of his generals and the corresponding picture over there that outlines numbers and names them all. And this is Martha Washington at her reception and a similar picture over here. Carol's the daughter of the American Revolution and I'm in the sons. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, <clears throat> we were showing these a bunch of years ago to one of our son-in-laws. And he said, well, I wonder if my great, great, how many great school granddad would be in one of these. And I said, well, Rusty, why do you think he would? He said, well, he was the signer of the Declaration of Independence. And his name's Dr. Benjamin Rush. Mm. And sure enough, he's in this picture. He's in the picture. Oh, wow. And uh, I didn't know anything about Rush at the time, and I've gotten some books on him since. And he was a medical doctor during the Revolutionary period. Uh, but his job was he carried correspondence from Washington out to the field. That's what, what he did for his. Man. Yeah, where I'm standing about right